this edition of ONTV News, I'm Ian Locke. The ONTV food drive benefiting the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry is right around the corner. ONTV has been gearing up for the big event for the past three months. The response from local businesses has been, in a word, incredible. Uh, that's why this is uh, a good timing on the ONTV, because it is about halfway in between the Thanksgiving drive and the postal drive. So uh, that's quite a stretch. So this fills in that gap nicely being in February and uh, again fills in hopefully uh, the majority of the holes and it generally does. How can you help the hungry in our community? ONTV has several ways you can donate food or funds to the food drive. Local Lake Orion businesses are drop-off points, so if you're out and about shopping, head on over to these businesses. In the village of Lake Orion, stop over at Paint Creek Bicycles or simply Marsala. They are currently accepting food donations. You can also drop food off at Gowling GMC Buick on M24, the Orion Township offices on Joslin Road, Good Shepherd Lutheran School on Baldwin Road, Liani Robotics at Key Industrial Drive off M24, Pink Creek Country Club will also open its doors to the public on Saturday, February 9th for our after hours drop off. Drop your food items and stay for some ice skating plus much more. As always, you can drop off donations at the ONTV studios in the Orient Center. We have also made it easier than ever to donate not only cash, but we've just added an online food donation at the click of a button. Visit our website at orionontv.org where you can donate money via PayPal. You can also click on the purple icon labeled You Give Goods. This will take you to a donation page that will allow you to select food packages from $5 on up to $500. These food orders will be delivered right to the ONTV studios. ONTV is also partnering with Buffalo Wild Wings in Lake Orion for a benefit night. If you bring in this coupon into Buffalo Wild Wings on Monday, February 4th, 20% of your bill will be donated to the food drive. This coupon is available on our website at orionontv.org or at our studio at the Orion Center. We'll even email one to you. Just call us at 248-693-3377 to have one sent out today. So join in and do your part to help the hungry in our community. Be a part of the ONTV Feed Our Fish food drive. There's no shortage of festivals and activities here in the area during warm weather months. But once the holidays have passed, residents have a tendency to curl up under a blanket until spring arrives. In an effect to get residents to embrace the winter weather, Oakland County joined forces with the city of Rochester to create a festival celebrating what makes the season special here in Michigan. Kayla Brandon reports from Rochester. Hopefully she bundled up. Ready? Yep, I'm ready. <laughs> Downtown Rochester was transformed Friday, January 25th, through Sunday, January 27th, into a winter wonderland. The city's sixth annual Fire Nice Festival was in full swing, and the weather seemed to be the icing on the cake for a snow-filled weekend of fun. This family event was created by County Executive Elbrooks Patterson and his staff to bring out families of the community during the long winter months and embrace the great outdoors. Some winter activities enjoyed at the Fire and Ice Festival were ice skating, sledding, and admiring the amazing ice sculptures. Here's what a few festival goers had to say about their fire and ice experience. To be honest, I've never done tubing before. This will be my first time. Really? So why are you interested in tubing today? Well, it looks fun. I always thought it looked interesting. I just never got the chance to do it until now. So is this your first time at the Fire and Ice Festival in Rochester? No. No, I live here for a few years now, so it's my, I think, third or fourth. Okay, and how is this year compared to other years? I think it's more activities, I think, and it's, we just got here, so we don't know, we didn't check it out yet, but I think it's, the weather is really beautiful, so I think it's so much fun this year. Um, last couple of years, it wasn't really maybe that cold, <laughs> but this year, I think it's fun. And how are you staying warm? Um, Right now, I'm relying on my clothes, but uh, I think I'm going to get to the fire at some point. <laughs> I want to thank the DDA from our downtown development authority. I want to thank our police and fire. Thank everybody for coming. I take complete credit for this wintry weather, and uh, it's going to warm up next week when this is done, so it's all perfect. 
Rochester Mayor Stuart Bixon elaborated more on what charms the city had to show off at the festival. Well, we get to show off that we have a great downtown, it's a family atmosphere, look at all the people downtown. We get to show off our Christmas lights again for everybody to see, which I think is a premier event in southeastern Michigan. So uh, Rochester looks great tonight. Do you think this event will draw people to Rochester to come out who normally oh, wouldn't? I do, and I think it gets bigger and better every year. And I think in the dead of winter, people are looking for things to do, and why not come down to Rochester on a night like tonight? The mayor wasn't the only official in the downtown area that night. Oakland County Executive Elbricks Patterson was also there to celebrate all of what Rochester has to offer. What has this event meant to you? Well, it's a chance to take the, you know, the dull winter months and turn them into a family event. So this is our sixth year. It gets bigger every year. Most people just sort of hunker down for January, February, March. All of a sudden, we now have an event where kids come out, they can do uh, what dog sledding you know, whoever thought they'd do that and then snowshoeing and coming down the uh, the uh, the second avenue I think it is uh, in tubing it's just a fun time to get the family out in the winter time and how happy are you with the turnout tonight oh, I'm great this is uh, it gets better every year and uh, so this last year if you recall everybody showed up in bathing suits it was a hot, 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 hot winter this year yeah we're dressed like we're supposed to be Nonprofit organizations benefited from the Fire and Ice Festival as well. The Rochester Fire Department has over 100 years of experience helping out their beloved city. We caught up with Chief John Seeslick to see what was cooking in the firehouse kitchen. What is the event tonight all about, the spaghetti dinner? Well, um, Raya came and approached us, the Rochester Area Youth Association, when Fire and Ice came about, and asked us if we would help sponsor a fundraiser for them and the money goes towards the Rochester area youth who need assistance um, from their programs, helps, uh, helps the kids who are in trouble or who need help. And that's really kind of what the firemen are all about, is helping people. And the good news is fires are down, and so it gives the firemen a chance to go ahead and give back to the neighborhood by doing things like a spaghetti dinner that really benefit um, out in the neighborhoods. The chief told us it's his hope to raise as much as $5,000 like they did two years ago. The festival truly is a fine example of neighbors coming out of winter hibernation to celebrate the season, make memories, and help out a good cause. Two elements are joining together tonight at the Fire and Ice Festival in Rochester. The fire, as you can see behind me, the beautiful fireworks in the sky, and the ice is the beautiful Michigan weather. Seems like everyone's been enjoying themselves and we're having a great time here. Reporting from downtown Rochester, I'm Kayla Brandon for ONTV News. Thanks, Kayla. Festival organizers introduced a new mascot this year. Attendees were asked to come up with a name. After all submissions were considered, the winning name was Patters the Penguin. No doubt a nod to festival creator L. Brooks Patterson. Speaking of fire and ice, with temperatures fluctuating between both extremes this winter, ice fishermen are having a hard time on the lakes. Here with some ice safety tips is Taylor Goldman. Living here in Lake Orion, everyone likes to spend their time outside on the many lakes we have here. Whether it's going out on the boat to catch the waves in the summer or spending their winter days ice fishing. Winter has finally sunk in, and all those lakes are trying to stay cold so you can enjoy your favorite winter activity. The hard water is something you should take seriously because ice should never be considered safe. Experienced ice angler Patrick Fitzpatrick has been enjoying ice fishing for 45 years. His favorite item to keep him safe is his ice pick. They fall through and get you. <laughs> One thing that's most important for your protection is making sure you have proper attire like experienced ice angler Tyson Miller knows all about. Uh, for the best protection, I would say you want to make sure that you have your layers. Uh, preferably, you really don't want to use like cotton or anything next to your skin because if you start sweating, then it'll start making you a lot colder. And when you're walking around and stuff and trying to get your hole made and things like that, then you'll start sweating. So like Under Armour or something like that right next to your skin. To stay warm, there are different shelters available. For like two people, they're just something really nice to be able to use to keep yourself out of wind. Um, when you hear stories about people falling through the ice, in which some cases they don't make it, how are you going to make it so you're safe? Well, I tend to try 
fishing with a partner or something so that way you never really want to go out by yourself on the ice because that's always you know there's always that risk of falling through uh, normally we'll have a backpack with me with like a rope or a whistle or things like that so that way if you do fall through and you're struggling too long and you can't yell loud enough, you can use a whistle and try to get people's attention. Despite being fully aware of the treacherous nature of ice, many experienced ice anglers die each year when they get careless or are unprepared. In order to deal with an emergency situation, here are some helpful hints you can take to avoid tragedy on the ice. Ice thickness is measured by new clear solid ice. The minimum standard for ice is 4 inches for foot traffic, 5 to 6 inches for snowmobiles and ATVs, and 8 to 12 inches for cars or small trucks. Alcohol and ice do not mix. When on the ice relaxing, don't drink. Alcohol impairs judgment, increases the dissipation of body heat, and results in fatigue. For these reasons alone, beer and spirits are one piece of equipment that should not be brought on the ice. Save the celebration for the fish fry. Watch for children. If you live or are visiting near ice and have kids, Inform them of the danger ice presents. You would not let a young child out of view at the water's edge in the summer. The same should hold true for winter. Remember to be safe and when in doubt, don't go out. For ONTV News, this is Taylor Goldman. Thanks, Taylor. Let's throw things over to Ryan Fields for our weekly sports roundup. for sports. Lake Orion Hockey was back in action on the 17th, taking on the Flyers of Farmington Hills Unified in an OAA Red Division showdown. The Dragons struck first with a flip shot by Connor Mesta off a rebound. That would be the last goal of the night for the Dragons. Flyers goalie Jacob Ponder played the best game of his career, saving 39 of 40 shots on goal. Behind the strong player Ponder, the Flyers tied the game in the second period by scoring off of a rebound. Late in overtime, Lake Orion's coach Nick Field pulled his goalie with 25 seconds left. However, this move would prove to be a bad decision as the Flyers breaks out on a breakaway and Kyle Witherspoon wristed the puck into the empty net to take a 2-1 victory over the Dragons. Farmington Hills Unify improves their record to 9-6-1 as the Dragons fall to 4-7-4. That's all for sports. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Ryan. Remember, you can catch replays of LOHS athletic events right here on ONTV. Just check our website's program guide for airtimes. That's it for this edition of ONTV News. Surf on over to OrionOnTV.org for additional news and information on programming and upcoming events. On behalf of the entire crew, I'm Ian Locke and thanks for watching. <laughs>